Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 9 a.m. session in the content and community track. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. And tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC14! This hour, we are happy to introduce a terrific session called Virtual Laboratory Training, Career Recruitment and Retention, our VLTC project. Our speaker for this session is the lovely Miss Sally Cherry. Sally is a lab consultant and an STI lab instructor, an American Society for Clinical Pathology member, and ASCP certified medical technologist. She is passionate about the integration of 3D virtual world technology into real life lab and health problems to enhance training and awareness. In April 2014, Ms. Cherry celebrated her 40th year in laboratory science and was featured in the ASCP One Lab News for 2014 Medical Laboratory Professionals Week. Welcome all, let's begin the session. Well, thank you for that wonderful welcome. Um, I hope everyone is bright-eyed and wide open, wide awake this morning. What we're going to start right in here. We're going to would like to share with you my virtual laboratory training, career and retention, career recruitment and retention project. Basically, what we're talking about, we're talking about a vision. This was a real to virtual, virtual to real vision that I had for laboratory science. And the vir which is the basis your virtual laboratory training, career recruitment, and retention project. And it started as a vision of this medical technologist who is passionate about lab work and getting information out. But this vision came out of my, my real life experiences. Thus, I call it real to virtual, virtual to real. Um, as she was saying, as she kind of said, yes, I've been celebrating 40 years in the laboratory of science, 40 diverse years, 15 of those, I'm sorry, 12 of those years in public health and laboratory management were working as a laboratory coordinator for the Baltimore City Health Department, their Bureau of Disease Control. 33 of those years was in laboratory consultant and training for National SED HIV Prevention Training Center. And five of those years was in international health working with organizations such as Japai Go and Columbia University, which is where the information or the interest came about during distance learning. Quite often when I was doing medical training with doctors and nurses, they were unable to either come to the United States, either come to the United States or to... Um, Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, someone... Hello, how are you doing? Join, come join us. As I was saying, a lot of times when I, was doing it, when I was doing training, the medical professionals could not come back to the area that I was doing the training. So I started looking for a... I'm getting feedback. Okay. So based on my, my real life objectives... So I'm gonna try to see. Can everyone hear me? Hopefully you can still hear me. I'm going to try to just talk over whoever's in that background. My basic real life objectives were, is to increase laboratory knowledge skills. Sorry about that. That was my bad. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, let's get back to my real life objectives. Based on my real life objectives were to is to increase laboratory knowledge and skills used in identification of microorganisms associated with sexually transmitted infections, such as clue, looking for clue cells, which is an indicator for bacterial vaginosis, candida species, and trichomonas vaginalis. And this is my real life objectives. 
and to promote, the most important was passion to my heart, is to promote various aspects of clinical laboratory science, also called medical laboratory science, such as sharing technical standards, laboratory practice guidelines, professional organizations, events, conferences, career preparation, and personnel retain, retention. For my virtual world, and the thing about it is my virtual world objectives, as you will see, are basically the same thing. But the only thing is this is a bi-directional vision I have. And this is what, what steer, what fuels, fuels my vision. The virtual world objectives, real to virtual, the real objectives, real life objectives are my same objectives when I'm in the virtual world. The only proud thing is that there's additional objectives in the virtual setting. Thus, my virtue to real, which is to integrate, which is to integrate real life, to integrate real life medical laboratory training, information sharing, laboratory career recruitment, and professional awareness in 3D virtual worlds. Also, and this is what part of this whole presentation this morning is about, to demonstrate how 3D virtual worlds can be used in the laboratory community for training, marketing, networking, career preparation, and recruitment, as well as to provide technical assistance, contact, linkage related to relevant, and I, I stress that word, relevant use of 3D virtual worlds within the medical laboratory community. No doubt, needless to say, there's some uses that some ways or some avenues that 3D virtual worlds just may not fit in the medical laboratory community, but there's, it's too valuable of a tool not to use where it can be used. I'd like to go back over the time and give some, a little background information about the virtual laboratory training um, career project. As I was saying before, my interest came about with my experiences of working overseas. In 1991, I was doing a distance learning laboratory training session with some Egyptian clinicians using, don't laugh, the telewriter system. And we're talking about 7 o'clock in the morning. We're gathering around the table doing the training. And that's when this idea came up. There's got to be another way. I'd like to keep my eyes open for a way to do some distance learning. 1988 through 80s, uh, 96, I was traveling um, overseas doing international laboratory training, needs assessment, train the trainers, your gamut of laboratory training sessions, working in Turkey, Egypt, Kenya, Uganda, and here in the United States with other nationals. As well as 1991, I started doing, uh, and to the present time, I started doing national laboratory training, looking for sexual, uh, looking for sexual transmitted infections. Again, a lot of times the medical professionals was not able to come back to the training site or I was not able to go to them. Therefore, the need for a distance learning platform was always on the table, it was always in front, so I was always looking. So in eight, 2008, I joined lab, Second Life, the Second Life community. And the usability issues just made me stop, quit, left, no problem, did not go back, I deactivated my account. And that's one of the things that makes me aware of some of the issues that are present that will be present for my colleagues in using it now. I know I was I was intimidated. That's the bottom line. I was intimidated using it, but I saw that it was a too valuable of a of a venue platform not to try to go back in and increase my usability and my skills. So in 2009, I decided to go. I went back on a 2D level. I went. You went into the. I became a member of the Metal Place. Some of you may remember the Metal Place is a 2D virtual world. Um, and that's when I've built phase one of Miss Bug Lady's Laboratory and Resource Training Center. 2009, phase two came about. I went back to Second Life and I started Miss Bug Lady's Career Center. And basically, it was sharing information and guidelines and just general resources with the um, visitors who came. Much to my regret, 2010. Metal Place closed and the laboratory project had to close down and I started exploring Open Simulator as a possible um, possibility to expand my laboratory. The vision was still there. I knew this 3D Virtual Worlds was definitely an excellent platform to use to do distance learning training, networking and other um, tasks. 2011, I was able to find an Open Simulator grid called Jakarta 
grid, which I set up Miss Bug Lady's Laboratory Center. Microscopes got activated. Once I got my ac microscopes activated, I know this is where I want to be. I can literally put slides on the microscope and show my colleagues or whoever came in for training. So I decided to expand the, the project, and this expansion involved the demolishing of my project that I had set up in Second Life and moved most of those components to Kitely. And I'm sure you've heard quite a bit of Kitelyn. You'll be hearing more of as the as the sessions goes on. My, and much to my delight, in 2012, Phase Four of the vision um, was established when I set up the STI Laboratory Training and Career Center in Kitely. And that's what a lot of the uh, illustrations you'll see today and you see in my presentation, if you visit, is based in Kitely. Right now, the laboratory facility in Kitely serves as the main laboratory. And as they will say, 2014, what is a grand year for me? It's 40 years, celebrating 40 years in laboratory science. And it's ideal for me to be at this juncture of bringing the real-life laboratory into my virtual um, community. I had the opportunity to do that in 2014 when we were celebrating Medical Laboratory Professionals Week. We had a, I did this by uh, doing a presentation um, and with the invitation of the awesome group there, TechSoup's uh, Nonprofit Commons, did a presentation at their weekly community meeting. After which, a small group teleported into Kitely and we did a laboratory tour of the center. Therefore, this is ideal with Kitely. It's a, a hybrid grid accessible. So in, no matter what grid of individual may be in, they can come into the laboratory facility. Serves the purpose when I need to reach out to the various clinicians throughout the country and the world. 2014, started building my laboratory equipment. Some things I could not find. I found some items in the Kitely market and some items I built myself, such as the microscopes and incubators, another project, another component of the laboratory project. And the Kitely based STD Laboratory Training Center and the Jacado based uh, Miss Buglader Center are now connected with the hybrid grid transport technology. I have my hybrid gates on both facilities. And the various avatars of my um, laboratory instructors, if they're based in, the, which are, doesn't make any difference which lab they're based in, they can go back and forth. That makes this project an ideal project at a very time, at a very timely um, period of within the laboratory. People are saying, well, why are you bothering with this? What's this real to virtual uh, activities? What's virtual to real? I want my whole concept, my vision is, real to virtual activities, events, processes that's going on into the real in the real world can be taken into a virtual environment. Connections, activities, events, information sharing that is done in the virtual setting can be brought out to the real world. I've had colleagues say, well it's not going to work. And I said, well what activity you do in the real world you don't think fits into the virtual world. So we're looking at a couple activities here. Okay, you're doing recruitment interviews in the real time. You do them in the virtual world. Probably sometimes a whole lot easier and less time save, less travel and, and quite time saving. You have meetings in the real world. A lot of times it depends on who's on shift, late shift. The laboratory never closed. So you got a 24 hour facility. Everyone's not going to be there. It's ideal to have a virtual meeting. Information sharing, training, um, um, Conferencing, networking, promotion, fundraising. These are activities that goes on in the real life that can be brought into the virtual world and is, is being brought into the virtual world, especially the virtual laboratory. The training component, this is the component that I have most interest in. My lectures, laboratory um, um, practicums, demonstrations, handouts, PowerPoints, podcasts. Anything that I'm doing in the, in the real world, real life, I'm bringing into the virtual world. Therefore, that is what the virtual laboratory training center is all about, what we focus on. Doing the training on site, no matter where the person is located, we can reach them through the virtual setting. And one of the most important things, people call me a network weaver, real-time network building, very essential to forming coalitions. In real life, you're meeting, you network with your local colleagues. 
local researchers, service providers, stockholders, stakeholders, and your board members. The nice thing about the virtual setting, you're dealing with, you're meeting with local and global colleagues, researchers, uh, service providers, stakeholders, broad board meetings. And you're also able to interact with other laboratory and allied health programs throughout the world. During a virtual setting, you won't have a meeting with someone in the UK. You can make an arrangement with someone have a meeting in the UK without getting have to get a plane ticket or without having to have a long distance phone call. You can meet in a virtual setting. That's a nice idea. Another way of using a virtual using a virtual um, setting. So the the whole project consists of two like I said two components: one in Kitely and one in Jakarta Grid. The virtual laboratory training and career center in Kitely, which is located in my share village, which is the community HIV AIDS resource exchange village, and it's located there. And it provides this is where we do the actual training, and plus they also have meeting and network space, have office space, and we do rent some of the office space. Has a laboratory career center, and in this laboratory career center is linked to the various laboratory organizations that provide laboratory development and training and um, evaluations for potential laboratories, which is very essential because we're have we're going to be fa we're facing a shortage of laboratories, and this is a great way to reach out and to recruit for um, potential laboratories. Also have a laboratory study area, and this is not these are actual working areas. And the, anything that's in this particular facility is either connected to a resource or a live person, site, or whatever. The whole idea is information sharing. I want to be where someone can be maybe in Nigeria. They want some laboratory information. They can come to this site. They can visit the site, click on get information. They may want to meet with someone, talk to someone, and might even want to sign up for one of the training sessions. We also have a research lab in a biohazard chamber, which right now we're in the process of inserting, a, uh, adding a Ebola information component to that, getting, helping to disseminate the information about Ebola, how to handle the specimens, how to transport the specimens. This is all essential information that laboratories need to know and it's constantly changing. And sometimes people don't have access to it. Well, what we like to do, we put the links to direct them right to the source of the information that they need to do the work they need to do or just for the general information. Now what you see here, this is the Virtual Laboratory Training Career Center. As I said, we have a biohazard area there. We have the entrance there. You, when you come into the entrance, it, you, you have a guide or you can click on a, we have our teleport. It's handicap accessible. You don't have to go up steps. And this little avatar is, is, is challenge. I am somewhat challenged when it comes to walking and what have you, which is probably why I am still standing by the, the, the sofa here. here. But um, that's one thing. We, if you come in, we have an elevator. You click on a button. You can go up the, up the steps, down the steps. On the first floor, we have a network area and have general information about events, laboratory-related. On the second floor, we have our career center. And on our, in our career center, we have most of the laboratory organizations linked there. Someone's interested in the American Society of Clinical Pathologists, they can click on a, 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 a poster there, and it goes to their website. If they're interested in, in microbiology, they can click on the American Society for Microbiology and go to their website. The whole idea is making information accessible. In this particular case, making laboratory science-related information accessible. Within the training center, we also have our computer lab. So we need to start doing some computer work. We have it set up there, and it's, it's a full operating computer lab. We have SED laboratory training, which we'll be doing a laboratory microscopic work. We're able to add slides to the microscope, and the students or the cl um, clinicians can actually click on the microscope and see the organisms or images of the slides that have been placed on there. So we can do basically as much as quotation mark laboratory practice as you want to want to do. We're putting on slides there that have been prepared, maybe wet preps or maybe gram stain slides, but the patient's slides that 
you will see in real life, you can see right here in the virtual setting. Now what you see here, this is from some of the laboratory equipment I was talking about because the need was there. And that's one thing I love about the virtual setting. It's a pioneer, you have to have a pioneer spirit. Some things are in place, some things are not in place. Um, but as a laboratorian, that doesn't bother us whatsoever. Laboratorians are resourceful individuals. I needed a microscope. I built myself a compound microscope. And one of the things about this particular microscope, it was built for training. So when we talk about the components and parts of a compound microscope, the students can actually break it apart, put it back together, and really get quite often laboratories or even getting used to that microscope, knowing the components, parts, and how to use it. The most important thing is being comfortable with that microscope so you can use it to help you in identification of microorganisms because the bottom line is quality care for the patient. And the laboratory is a piece of the puzzle, and we try to make our contribution on helping to get that patient diagnosed, get them treated, and back with their families. We have an incubator here we set up. We do incubations and down in the laboratory. We need to discuss various organisms or different things. We like to have everything. The whole vision is to have things almost equal to or parallel with the real life laboratory so we can use it as a fully training operating uh, area. What you see here, I would mention we have the two sites. We have one in Jakarta Grid and one in Kitely. This is our laboratory. This was the phase three lab in Jakarta Grid. And what we have here is our conference room, our training room, classroom, viewing room, uh, different terms for it. But what base we have here, we can actually show the various organism slides that I will show in real life. I can actually show them right here in world, just as I'm showing these slides this morning. And the... Um, Miss Bug Lady's lab at in Chicada Grid. We have a visiting researchers lab. We have meeting space, and we have the laboratory. Uh, but we have the biohazard room. We have the um, library and the study area. You might want to know where did the Miss Bug Lady come from? That's my nickname that was given to me by a colleague several years ago, and it's thick. It stuck over the years. I get a little excited when I'm working in the laboratory, and I come across that elusive bacteria organism. Um, that just what you want to find, you want to find what's causing that patient discomfort, what's causing that patient's infection, or in some cases, the disease. And when you find it, it's, it's a red, flag, red letter day for us, I'm concerned. That's why they call me Miss Bug Lady. I get very excited about the bugs. Also in the uh, Miss Bug Lady's laboratory, base have set up a scenario of various organisms and that's another thing about the virtual laboratory. Whatever your mind can imagine, you can create uh, it's a great uh, teaching tool, building various organisms, and you look into the and the sitter at the bottom illustration. You see this little black, uh, just smoky area. That's my walk-in incubator base that I have yeast growing in there, and I actually have built out the yeast. Have this giant place. It'd be great demonstration for medical students and um, high school students. Another way to get them interested in laboratory science. I became interested in laboratory science when I was a shy high school student in the 10th grade several years ago. Therefore, I know this, this is a good way to reach the students, show them, tell them about laboratory science. Someone shared, shared information with me about becoming a medical technologist. 40 plus years later, I'm a medical technologist and still loving it. What, get back to some of the activities that goes on in the lab that can be done in the laboratory in a virtual setting. And that's the whole idea and the whole purpose of one of the main purposes for the project. In addition to doing the various laboratory procedures, but also to demonstrate and show what can be done in, that, in the setting. Here in the first, we have where I'm meeting with a colleague and I had the pleasure of meeting various colleagues in the virtual setting. We, in Kite, we have, we have weekly community meetings. And that's another thing. You can form in coalitions, meet with individuals. You can do networking. 
Uh, you can also, any U YouTube videos, which excellent training YouTube videos are present. They can be viewed in the laboratory. I have one that we are running. We change them up from time to time. We're talking about becoming a microbiologist and, and what it takes in the laboratory. Another way to bring the students in and sh share with them what they need to know about becoming a laboratorian. And needless to say, there's various challenges. And that's one of the things you be mindful of, but you cannot let the challenges stop your project, your vision. One of the big challenges, like I was saying before, was the, was the equipment. Desktop, laptop, some tablets. You want to be concerned about your system requirements to be able to access the virtual base environment. Usability. As I said before, that's what made me to come out of the virtual setting several years ago. But with training and coaching, I was able to attain the skills and understanding them to use the technology. Now the challenge is project funding. That's one of the reasons why I had to close down. I closed down the Second Life um, project. It did not fit into the budget, so we had to find a way to expand. The whole idea is not to just keep it at one level. We're, this is phase four. That was the whole concept. We have a, The next phase five will be a little ways to come because we're going to build on this phase four. But we hopefully will be able to get out more additional funding through sponsorships, grants, and training revenue because we see this is an awesome potential for bringing laboratories together, provide training for laboratories and medical um, personnel and other allied health professions. One of the challenges that I guess the number one challenge I face is the technology phobia. So this is one of the big, most important things is getting the buy-in from decision makers in the facilities. To, too often people are not, they, when they're not familiar with something, they tend to back away from it. But I think if they see the value of it, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this presentation, one of the reasons why I'm always putting my, my little avatar friends out there on the line with me to say, you know, wave our banners, this is what we can do in the laboratory, this is what we can do in the virtual community. It's, not, it's a non-traditional platform, so you, you must have that pioneer spirit. As a colleague of mine said, wrote an excellent article several years ago in the Hybrid Grid Business uh, Newsletter. You have to have that pioneer spirit. You don't want to give up. But the thing about it is our military, our education institutes, institutions, and several other colleagues have that pioneer spirit. They're using this setting. And it's an excellent setting, and it must be used, especially by the laboratories. We don't want to give it up because one of the main lessons learned is don't give up. Technology is a laboratory thing and virtual worlds are, an, are ideal laboratory tools. This particular project came, was emerged out of a vision that I had in looking for a platform to do distance learning. So because of that I expressed to people live your vision in and out of the lab and let your vision be a virtual based vision. And, it, and now I've kind of went rather quickly on this, but I wanted to make sure I had some plenty of time to for questions and other discussions, and for they have some comments on how we're using it in there. The overall idea is to bring laboratories in, to bring medical personnel in. May they be located in my local area or on a national basis be able to bring them into that virtual setting, meet with them, talk with them. Sometimes might not be trending, maybe just sitting having a meeting, discussing, or doing some planning for projects. But you have that virtual setting. I don't have to get on a plane. They don't have to get on a plane. We can meet in a virtual setting in the laboratory. We can discuss laboratory issues. We can bring the components and the principal people who we need at the table in that setting. And what I have included here. Oh, I must go back. I forgot. I must introduce my, my colleagues in the virtual setting. I could not do this without my colleagues. And they are my colleagues. I, um, Sally S. Cherry, BSMT, ASCP. She may serve as the lab consultant, but she can do nothing in the virtual world without us. Sally Cherry, she's in Kitely. And she's also in the Open, Open Simulator Community Conference Grid. Savannah Cherry is in, is in Educator Grid. 
This is the team in our open simulator laboratory team that works together getting information out, sharing information, and spreading the word about using virtual world technology to enhance laboratory activities. Indeed, a real to virtual, virtual to real vision for laboratory science. And I've included my information here, contact information. Feel free to contact me. Our website is at real to real the number two virtual number two real dot com. And you can email me at Sally at cherrynetwork.com. Although my motto in real life is have microscope will travel, in the virtual life is real to virtual, virtual to real. Yes, I do get excited about this because this is a platform that I see a a need for because of the, a lot of the uh, budget cutbacks, a lot of the time restraints, um, location restraints, um, physical, and when I say location, I'm talking the physical location restraints. I don't have to wish I could work with my colleagues in distance lands. I can meet and talk with my colleagues in distance lands. And laboratories have a lot to talk about because there's a lot of people we need to be out there helping. And at this time, hopefully we have some we have plenty of time for questions or input. And hopefully there's some laboratorians that may be listening, some laboratorians may be in the audience. I'd like to get some feedback from you if possible. Were there any questions? Well, I really, sh I truly enjoy sharing my vision, my laboratory vision with you. Like I say, be sh feel free to stop in and visit us. We're in, we're in Kitely. We're on the region, Sherville uh, Village. You can go to um, Kitely, um, Kitely.com and you put, look up on our world, group of worlds and you put in um, Share Village, you can find it. And we have, when you land there, you have, you'll see a nice sign, a nice little bacteria, you just click on the sign, you'll be trans teleported to the laboratory. Any other questions? If there's no other questions, if that concludes my presentation, like I said, if you have any information, any questions, like to do some follow-up, feel free to contact me, Sally at CherryNetwork.com. If you can't rem remember that, just do a shout out or do a hit me up on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, Sally S. Cherry on Facebook. Okay, well, thank you, Sally, for a terrific presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. In this room, the next session will be applying real-life research to create virtual landscapes for historic sites with Nova Saunders at 10 a.m. Thank you again to our speaker in the audience. We'll be back shortly with the next session. Well, thank you. Okay.